thanks for coming. I uh, really appreciate it. My name is Guy, and I'm the co-founder of Matterboard, and I also am a partner of an award-winning architecture firm that is based in London. And I'll just show you a little bit about the work that we do, um, just to give you an understanding of my background. So I've worked for the last 15 years in primarily uh, ultra-high net worth individuals um, working on their private homes. This includes uh, architecture delivery, design, as well as interiors. Um, and these are some very wealthy clients uh, and, and a few celebrities, but it's always meant for, um, we've had some very creative projects um, and very exciting briefs, uh, often very complicated um, projects at the same time, uh, architecturally and spatially and from design point of view. Um, and the style has been extremely varied, everything from, you know, ultra modern to very Baroque uh, and uh, and eclectic styles too, um, and often doing some quirky things. And um, with that, uh, we have about 40 designers in the practice. And so we've worked really hard at trying to form some structures to how we think, uh, how we can improve ourselves uh, at all levels of design. And I think that's some of the stuff we're going to talk about a little bit here too, um, where we'll talk a bit about the creative process. Um, which is quite amorphous and it helps us to have some structures in place when we think about designing. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why Matterboard was founded, which is um, on the principle of trying to make um, designers in the a and industry better storytellers. And we do this you know, aesthetically, we do this by mixing and matching materials and products together um, to create moods um, and ultimately to create the spaces that we and our clients will live in. And um, so we tell stories with, with materials and images um, and ultimately the physical space. And Matterboard's goal here is to allow us to be able to design a lot more and waste a lot less um, by creating a new category called virtual sampling, which is meant to liberate the designer from their shelves um, of physical samples that we can access materials and products in, in seconds and allow us to design in seconds, which I'll, I'll show you too uh, while using Matterboard. Um, but it also allows us to reduce physical sampling during the conceptual stage. Um, everything about our design process has gone digital and really we should be able to create our sample boards and our mood boards in the same way before we need to actually physically touch the, the samples. Um, so let's just jump straight into it. Um, I believe we have um, we have some time here, so I'm going to just quickly cover some ideas around creativity um, as a process. And I know we're going to talk about mood boards here and sample boards, and we're going to we're going to spend a good quality of our time here actually working a mood board from scratch. And I'm just going to talk you through it as I go. So I think there's going to be a lot of learning there. But a mood board doesn't start without context. And so I do think it's really important that we talk a little bit about the structures to help us get to a good place before we even start the, the mood board. So how do we set ourselves up for success? So let's just think about the creative process for a bit. And we hear this all the time. I'm sure everyone's heard it, that the creative process is not a straight line. And that is very true. We don't go from idea to a vision uh, in an instant uh, on a very clear path. The, re the reality is that being creative in any industry looks a little bit something like this. Uh, we start off with our ideas and we go on a journey where we don't necessarily know the uh, final product of our vision or how we're going to get there. Uh, we'd love to be able to go in a straight line, but it's, it's not really how the creative juices work. And so it looks a little bit like this. We, we sort of start our journey and we move off in different directions and we get distracted by something or we discover something and we circle around that for a bit um, before we veer off in a completely opposite direction and try to find our way back on course. And at some points we even go backwards uh, to quickly turn around with a sudden moment of inspiration and we shoot forward towards our, our vision. Um, and this is the beautiful process. Um, and it's certainly not a straight line. And it's important to uh, mention this because you'll see that even when we get into the actual mood boarding process, we have to allow ourselves some permeability. 
We have to allow ourselves to move outside of the structure and we have to allow ourselves to go off path. That's actually really part of the beauty of um, the creative process. And we shouldn't try and refrain ourselves too much from it. So this is why we're establishing this right now, that the creative process is not a straight line. But something else that's worth thinking about here is that the more you zoom out of the creative process, further and further you keep zooming out, you start to realize that it might not be a straight line, but we are going in a certain direction. We are trying to go from an idea to a vision and ultimately to uh, an end product after the vision. And so the further out we zoom from the creative process, you start to realize that it's true the creative process is not a straight line, but it is linear. This is something I, I like to think about in practice too, because what this means is that we know that we want to move forward. We know we want to move in a direction. And so although creativity is amorphous, it is helpful for us to think about structures to put in place in order to get us to our goal. Um, another analogy is just thinking about it like a bowling alley. Um, and you have these guardrails that get put up on the side when you're learning how to bowl. And as designers, what we want to do is we want to hit a target, right? That could be our client brief. It could be something that we've created ourselves. But we want to be able to hit a target. And in a professional practice, as professional designers, we want to be able to do it over and over again. And so we can't rely on, you know, just um, putting our, our hand out the window and hoping something um, falls into our palm. We actually want to be able to set up structures and systems that will allow us to get there quicker. And eventually what does happen is that you do them enough and you take down the guardrails and you've got various different ways of hitting down um, the target, but at least we can get quicker and faster at doing it. And we can also teach it further down the line and amongst um, our colleagues and contemporaries. So this is why structure is important for us. So <clears throat> we're gonna talk uh, about vision um, because the mood board is actually part of communicating our vision to a client. Um, but let's understand where that sits in the creative process. So I call this the creation tornado because um, it's one way to try and think about what vision actually means to us. Um, so if you could imagine you've got a huge cloud of inspiration, right? It's a shapeless but very, very large and forever growing um, storm of ideas and inspiration. And we need to turn that and funnel that into a product. So the vision is a very important um, thing which sort of sits at that point between inspiration and the product. So if we zoom into that a little bit, and here we start to see that inspiration is um, this sort of amorphous cloud where we start. And we want to try and channel that into a vision. And a vision, therefore, becomes quite like a funnel. It's about taking all this inspiration and all these ideas that we have and trying to narrow them down so that we have a focus and then funneling that focus into something that can actually become a realized product. If you're a product designer, that's actually you know, building you know, whatever that item is. But for us as designers, that's the final room or the space or the building that um, our client is going to occupy. That's our product. But this is true for most creative processes. And what you'll find here with this analogy is that the wider your inspiration, the more amorphous, the less structure it has, um, the harder it is for you to funnel that into something. And the opposite is true. The more focus you can have as your point of inspiration, the better your funnel will work. And that tighter vision that you can create will allow you to get to the product quicker. Um, and lack of that vision means that it's really hard to communicate, to design procurement specialists and consultants and clients and, um, and workshoppers and craftsmen and brands what you're looking for. It's extremely hard to do that. So that space between inspiration and vision is what we often call the blank canvas. It's our starting point. And once you've secured that really good vision, the next sort of phase is realization and production, which we're not going to talk about. We're talking about this first phase. And the mood board or the sample board is a big part of that. It is our ability to 
harness our vision just before the procurement process, just before we start to specify materials and put things in front of our clients. So there's a lot of pressure in being able to do that succinctly. And the reason we've been talking about all of this is because there is a lot more to be done before you build the board. And this is the structure, these are the guardrails to allow us to have the best chance of success and to be able to build the board effectively and know what we want to achieve. So I do think that's the most important thing to take away from this is that you're going to see that the build up before the board is basically setting you up to whether you're going to be able to build the board quickly and effectively and fast and hit that target. So these are the four uh, sort of three steps leading up to the board that we'll do as an office. Um, and if we're not doing it um, in a presentation, we're doing it in our heads. This is happening immediately the minute we have a client and the minute we have a project and the minute I need to build a board. I'll always think to myself, what's the space? Then I'll need to pick concept imagery to help refine that, that vision looks like. And we'll talk about extracting elements and then I'll go into building the board. And this can happen in 20 seconds, but can also be you know, a 30 minute exercise. Analyzing the space, so what, what do I mean there? Um, when you're a designer and you're going to um, design a room, you, you should always ask yourself, what do you inherit? And when you have existing spaces, then you're always going to inherit something. Often it's architectural uh, joinery, or architectural details, architectural materials, even the space itself, right? Is it a high ceiling space? Is it a low ceiling? Are there multiple different um, layers of ceiling? This is all going to change your strategy. High ceiling has a very different effect and a low ceiling is slightly more challenging and you have to think about colors, et cetera. So everything that you inherit is extremely important in terms of the ultimate goal, right? The board that we're going to put together. Um, and the things that you inherit, for example, some of the architectural materials might land up going into the board themselves. And also the detail, you know, are there architraves? Is it a traditional building? Are there contemporary sliding doors? Do they have a color to them? Um, is there a, you know, an anodized black metal um, front door? So it's important to think about what do you inherit? And then finally, you start to then take what you've inherited and you put together concept imagery. And, and I know you're all very, very familiar with this. It's how we sort of build a picture in our head. Um, and so I'll just give you some idea of how we like to think about pulling the boards together in terms of concept imagery. And I like to think about it in terms of fulfilling two parts, and that is the look and the feel. Now, we hear that all the time, especially in the design industry. So what do I mean when I say look and feel? There is, of course, an aesthetic, the way something looks and appears, which we want to achieve. We have an idea in our head what we want. We have uh, things we've inherited from a project or a client's brief. Um, and so the client has their own ideas of what they want in their mind. I mean, you need to get on par with them. Uh, what one person says is contemporary, another person will think is modern. And most people think of modern, they don't actually think of a particular period in time, they just think of today. And so they muddle up those two words and what one person's traditional is someone else's um, modern. So it's important that you get on page with the same idea of what the look is. And this is aesthetic. And there's the feeling of something. Now, the feeling is because we deal with materials Things have reflectivity, they have shadow, they have textures, you touch things. Um, interior designers deal with um, the close proximity of you know, the human hand. Um, we're dealing with the things that you hold and door handles and handrails and uh, you take your shoes off and you feel the cold marble or a wooden floor. So it's important to think about what the aesthetic and the materials will make you feel. Sometimes I think about it like a very smart um suit jacket now a cheap manufacturer or something you find on uh, uh, online from china can have a very good looking suit and maybe it looks like a savile row suit but only once you put those two suits on you feel the difference 
one will make you stand up straight and you'll feel the canvas and the stitching in the back of it. And you'll look at the craftsmanship and you'll see the patina and the texture of the, of the fabric. And the one you know, will feel pretty awful. And so there is directly a feeling that materials and textures can have that change the way our mood is. And so one can one particular palette will make us feel sophisticated, the other one makes us feel warm. Um, and so it's important to think about those two things. So here, have fun with bringing in inherited um, images, uh, bring in reference pictures, and bring in lifestyle imagery. Here's the crucial step a lot of us leave out. And it's the most important step, and it's the one just before we actually get around to building a board. And this is the one that's going to really set us up for success and be able to build a board more cohesively and feel better as designers and, and hit the target. And that is, once you've finished that concept imagery and once you've got a buy-in from a client, you need to do some work. And that work is study the imagery you've collected and understand why it works and why you like it or why the client likes it. And ask them those questions if you're unsure. And ask you have to ask yourself these questions. This is the best way to build muscle as a designer. We do this at all the way through um, from a from junior designers to senior designers. We're constantly questioning why we like something and what works in an image. And as you do it, it starts changing the scale at which you observe imagery. Instead of just looking at a picture and saying, wow, that's gorgeous and we really like that, you start to look a little bit closer you say, well, you know, it's a it's a cluster of materials. I like the ornamentation. I like that there is very traditional detailing. I like that there is a contrast with the um, with a, a veiny material, and you know, I like the neutral color cutter marble over here. And as you start to do that and start to really examine each picture, you actually start to build the board already, because you're now getting a sense of what you want what your base materials are going to be and when to bring in geometry, when not to bring in geometry or the fact that nothing has patterns um, because you're looking at a minimalist scheme. It starts to actually give you a sense of what you're going to do with the board. And now you've got this wealth of knowledge. You're not starting from scratch. And so you get to the board. And this is, uh, this is the last slide here, guys, and then we'll, we'll actually get into um, trialing something uh, live. Um, and we'll use Matterboard. Matterboard's a great strategy for, for uh, creating mood boards quickly. Um, but here, what we've done is I've made a suggested process so that the minute you start the board, you're not in a dilemma, uh, what I look for first and you know where do I even begin? Um, and so how to get onto a really good position to start is, um, and this is, I've written here, it's a suggested process. This is not a rule. Um, and that is to start with the large surfaces. This is what we do uh, as a practice, is start with a large surface. These are architectural surfaces. And when I mean large surfaces, I mean, these are the floors. Uh, ask yourself, is it a painted, is it a, a, a sorry, is it a, painted wall? Is there wallpaper? Do I have wall tiles? What's the floor surface? Am I looking at um, woods? Am I looking at marble? Am I looking at more than one wood? And the ceiling. So these are your big, big surfaces. Start there. They'll form the base palette. Then you start to layer on depending on different scales. So we would go to joinery next, what I call secondary surfaces. So if you have feature countertops or you've got side tables where you're going to bring in more surfaces um, to both the sides and the tops and joinery, uh, either you've inherited joinery or you're purchasing joinery or you're building it from scratch. These are large surfaces that come second to the architectural ones. And so that is the next place you can start to focus your attention. And then metalwork fabrics and accents, these are pretty flexible. Um, I try to apply some structure here. And the reason why I would start with metalwork and trims is you've done the floor surfaces and you've done some of the secondary joinery surfaces that you want to bring in. Metal forms a really great um, transition material. 
for joinery and for floors. And it can completely change the look, whether it's a chrome or it's got warmth from brass or it's a sort of gun metal or a gold trim um, or something extremely glossy. It really, really can change the colors that you've just picked as secondary surfaces and large surfaces. So I would usually go to trims. They're a transitionary um, element and metalwork. Um, so I'll bring in door handles at this point and push handles, et cetera. Then I like to bring in fabrics. So fabrics are a huge component of interior spaces. So I'll usually start with what are my base materials. So what's the biggest you know, surface that I'm going to cover? Is it a carpet? Do I have a sofa? What And what material is that sofa? Before I do things like um, curtains and before I do things like um, accent pillows. Um, but that usually happens very, very quickly. You'll see that. We'll, uh, we'll bring in what the base material is and we then start throwing in all the other fabrics. And these are what form accents. Um, this is where you bring a little bit more extra character and a little bit more nuance and detail. And um, so what we're doing here is we're stacking, we're layering, and we're starting with different scales, biggest to smallest. Um, and then there's furniture and lighting. Now, furniture and lighting, we're going to bring in um, as reference imagery. Now, again, furniture can play a big, big role if your client has inherited something that they want you to use. So they said, you know, here's our particular sofa, and, or here's a chandelier that the space has. Um, and lighting really changes the entire mood. Um, but I think it's really important that you have all of those other materials pulled together before you actually bring in the lighting, because you can have one black and white uh, material palette and the lighting can make it modern, the lighting can make it traditional. So I think it should be done towards the end. And finally, accessories is just where you bring in uh, interesting little pieces to help build a language and build a good story, maybe some twigs or a, she a seashell um, into the mood board. Okay, so um, that is setting ourselves up for actually getting a mood board started. So let's actually start building one immediately. So um, I'll just go to start designing and I'll open up a Matterboard account. So just the default uh, material Matterboard. So I'll start new and I'll leave that. Now this might be a little slower um, it, I mean, I might talk a little slower, not, not Matterboard functioning a little slower, because I know you guys want to learn how to use Matterboard at the same time. So um, rather than just talk about how I'm designing, I'm going to also try and talk about the software. So I have two roles to do here. Um, but we have, um, we, have a, we have a sidebar over here. I'll just show you this. If you want, you want to come to paints, this will um, select all the paint materials on the right hand side and objects that you can apply paint to. So I'll just quickly show you how that works. I bring in an object and now with that object selected, I can click on any one of these um, paint materials and change the paint. And I can also drag, as you saw there, I can drag and drop a paint swatch. And with the object selected, I can now change the color of it. This is actually a principle of how Matterboard works generally, um, is that you can drag materials in and you can select that material and then change the material surface on that object. We also have collections on the side. This is where I've saved um, items that I really like into groups, um, either for a particular project or just they're a theme um, that I'm, you know, I like as, as materials. Um, this is really useful because sometimes you see things you really like and you might want to use in a board. So here I'm just showing you, I've dragged that element straight into the board. And with that element selected, I can actually change the material on it. So I'll delete that. Um, but maybe we keep this and maybe we keep that. It might be relevant to what we're doing. Um, so uh, you can already see this is part of uh, the haphazard process of, of making boards. 
Um, and now we have accessories on the sides, the collection of um, accessories that we can bring into Matterboard, but it is also where you can find specific products. So these aren't repeatable materials. These are actual products that you can find in store by manufacturers. Um, so for example, if I go to brand here and I click three form, these are actual um, tiles, um, transparent tiles, for example, by this, this company's product. So you can find them here. And then on the right-hand side, we have materials. So that's a little bit about how Matterboard uh, is set up. I'll just delete all of these. And <clears throat> I'll talk you through a couple of other features now as we're designing. But let's start with um, in our inspiration. So um, let's say that this is what we have inherited. I'm just trying to find my motherboard. Okay, let me delete these other tabs. These are just other projects. Okay, so I've actually dragged this reference picture in from a website directly into Matterboard. And this means that I don't have to download an image, uh, right-click, save it, and upload it into Matterboard. I can actually just drag and drop from different tabs. And then it will land up here in images. You can see it over here. Um, and this is a great option here. We've got shape shift. This is where I can just change the the, the shape of this element uh, just to make it more interesting for our board. Turn it into a poster, for example. Um, I'm going to leave that over here. This is going to be um, what I've inherited from the client. Let's say this is their, their style. And they also had this piece of furniture um, that they really, really wanted. So I'm going to bring this piece of furniture in as well. Drag that in into Matterboard, so that this coming as another image. So this is kind of what I'm working with. I actually want to remove this background. So with that image selected, I'm going to go to Properties and hit Remove Background, and I'll allow that to process. And that should move the white background behind this chair. And this is um, what we're going to use now to create a palette. Um, the client likes this reference picture, and they've told us that they've got this piece of furniture here um, that they want us to use. And so here you can see we've actually just removed the background, which is a cool feature. So I'm going to leave that over here. Um, and I've studied this now, and I understand the overall look. It's quite an eclectic um, style. It's got a bit of a mid-century feeling to it. But I can already see the prevailing materials are these sort of maple um, wood finishes uh, with sort of very, very bright, very, very reflective materials and a lot of fun happening over here. Now, we're not going to build this exact palette, but it's our point of inspiration. So I am going to start with the floor surfaces, right, which is what we were saying earlier. Um, so I'm just going to go here to object, and I'm going to bring in a square blank object. And I'm going to find some wood materials. So here I can search for materials in Matterboard um, by category. I can go to flooring, leathers, marbles, etc. Um, and I'm going to go find wood. And I've got that blank texture, uh, this blank object over here. And I'm going to add some materials to it. Um, I'm looking for something more like. Yeah, so trying to find something that is a bit more warm, a little bit more like that maple. Um, now, I'm not sure if this is the one I want, so I'm actually going to copy and paste. I'm just doing Control-C, Control-V, and walnut is probably more or less what I'm looking for, but you know, it's actually these eco lamps. These are great. So this dome is flooring. I think this would work very, very, very well. Um, and that walnut finish, I think, is going to be a little bit too yellow. I'll copy that. And right now, I'm just examining all different types of wood. Maybe I'm trying there, looking at their different textures, um, examining how they look under light. So I can move 
the light around Matterport and actually see the different way that wood wood grains and reflect light and shadow. Um, let's see. Maybe I'll just type in. Yeah, that's those are nice. I do like that. So these sort of wood panels, I think that would be a good finish. So say I'm happy with those materials. Um, more specifically, this one, I'm going to put this to the side and use this as my base. And now I'm looking for another floor material. I'm going to do all my architectural surfaces. In this case, I'm actually looking for some marble. So I'm going to go to marble and deselect the wood here and try and find something that's worth. So I'm just showing you Matterboard you can bring in directly into the scene. And then once you've got that object, you can also change and select different material types. Um, what you can also do is once you've got that object selected, I can change the type of object to, um, I'm changing the angle of the camera right now by holding control or shift on a MacBook and then selecting the background and just moving with my mouse. Um, but I quite like this material and didn't like the size of it on the board, so I put it into something quite small. I'm looking for something more like this material, which I think looks great. I also want it to be a large surface. It's going to be our architectural surface. So I'm happy with something like that. This is just an interesting surface material. I quite liked it. It had some blue in it. So I'm going to make it a bit smaller so it doesn't dominate. And that could be a coffee table for us, so I'm skipping one, one ahead. Um, Okay, so now I've got my two main surface materials. I want to bring in a paint. So I know that I'm going to use some paint for, <clears throat> for the wall. And I'll bring in this stucco paint finish here. And you can see already um, the paint object is now selected different paints. I think we're going to go with something like just something more neutral, a little bit creamy. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that color. Um, you can sort of see the stucco finish over there. So that's good for us. Happy with that. <clears throat> um, now that I've got those floor surfaces, those main architectural surfaces, I'm now going to go to those secondary um, surfaces, so the joinery. And again, I think um, I quite like this already um, for joinery. Um, and this was the alpha wood, and I might want to change that slightly if we go to back to wood. Let's find something like this dark walnut. Now, I think that's much better. You can see these two are have a relationship, and I think that is a little bit more close to the walnut finish that we liked in these imagery. So but now you can see that the floor surface and the joinery surface are the same size. So I actually want to build in some hierarchy. So I am going to make this slightly smaller. And you'll see the texture will change, which is a great thing about Matterboard is you now we can keep that smaller size so that this is the largest surface area, but the texture has changed its repeat hoarding. Great. Now, I would like to bring in some secondary um, material surfaces. So I'm going to go back to filter. And there was, I look for, um, let's go back here to objects, materials. Now, what I want to do is actually start to look for things that are blue. So um, I'm now just selected blue as a filter, and I have every single object all in blue, including materials um, and hard surfaces. But I'm looking for a brand, Cosentino. I know that they have this Labrador worktop, which I think is really nice. Um, so I've just dragged that directly in, and you can see here it's got a glossy finish to it, which I really like. That could be a great coffee table and start to bring some of those blues in. I do want to change the shape, and I'm going to turn it into something like this size. It works for us. That's great. You can see if we just move the light around. So I quite like that as, a, as an accent material. I don't want it to be too large on the board. And 
I do want to bring in some tiles. So I'm going to go over here to accessories and I'm going to look up some tiles. Let's see, Portobello, do great tiles. Just bring in a bunch of these. Over here, just by dragging and dropping these tiles. These are all ceramic. And let's look at the navy. Navy blue, it's got an interesting texture to it. Okay, take that one away. And I quite like the, this dark blue one. I think I'll tell you why. Um, I feel like this um, blue tile is going to bring some nice sort of um, homely feel to it with the mottled finish, um, but it's also glossy texture. And I think that's going to work quite well. It's nice to mix um, the different types of finishes, but I do think this is going to help me with fabrics. It's going to set the tone of blue that I'm looking for, and I'm going to build around it. So let's bring that and tuck this underneath. Now, the nice thing about Matterboard is if you hold shift, um, while you're moving an object, it will stay locked in place. Uh, but if you don't hold shift, it will move around. And that's how you can get one other object on top of each other, like that. So I can bring that down there and hold shift and just tuck it underneath. The other thing you can do is I can lock this material. So now can't move that out the way. I'm going to unlock it for now, um, just to make sure, because I might want to use it again. Okay, now that I've got that in place, I'm going to start to um, look for some other um, feature materials here. And I think one of the things I'd like to do with this floor is bring in something that's quite traditional. Um, and this is very eclectic. It, is, it does look very modern, but I think that their piece of traditional flooring would be really nice. Um, maybe something with a strong, harsh black pattern to it and something very geometric. So these, the Jeffrey Court flooring tiles are really awesome. They look very contemporary um, mosaics. Um, and so right now I'm just kind of seeing what they look like on the board. Bring these. I think actually I quite like the first one, which was this. I think the geometry is going to be interesting and curious for us. So I'm going to leave this on the board here. And now let's start looking at um, bringing some of those metal trims that we spoke about. So up here, I'm going to go to disks. And here we have just some, some generic metal products. I'm going to go find some real products too, but I'm going to bring in copper and brass, just show you the difference if I bring in that. Um, brushed nickel, i move the light over these. You can actually see the texture. And I think the nickel is... Nice, but it's not the right look for us. I think we want something slightly warmer. When I look at those palettes, I think war warmer brass goes really the goes really well with the walnut. And this copper, I think, is going to be a great transition here with um, with the blues. Um, and I think these two would probably do well inverted, but there's not enough contrast over here. So that's why I'm going to do this the other way around. Just put this up on here, leave that over there. I'm always moving the light around to see uh, how the different materials are interacting with each other. And once I'm happy with that, I think I'm going to actually look for a metal panel um, for some more joinery. Now that the metal actually is looking very good, so I can search directly for metal that was under blue. It looks pretty exotic, but I think it's too extreme for us. Um, so here I can show you, I can just drag the material directly in to Matterboard again. Um, and we can use this to try different types of metal finishes. And I, this looks amazing. So I think it'd be really nice in this because you know even in this image over here, you can see there's a highly reflective mirror surface. So I think bringing in some joinery that is going to have that metallic surface, I think is going to work really well. And we can already start to see our board is now building itself up together. So I'm just going to flip sides here to show you. We've started with large surfaces. We've done some secondary. We brought in those trims. It made us feel like we wanted to have some more metal surfaces. Now let's jump into fabrics. <clears throat> so obviously a great place to start is just jump into blue. Um, and I've got metal there. And hit fabrics. 
Um, and now we have a great selection of fabrics over here that you can just start dragging in to Matterport. This is some of the best fun uh, you can have with it is just start bringing in the different materials that you like. However, we're starting with accent materials. And I, I think you want your base material. Remember, we spoke about that. Um, and I think leather is a great base material, especially for a large sofa. And I think it should be more neutral. So I'm going to move these to the side um, rather than delete them. And I'm going to start off by not having blue ticked or fabric. I'm just going to type in leather, find ourselves a nice Cortina leather. Let's bring this in here. And let's find something. Just show you the type of detail we're able to get. All the different textures. So that tan's very nice, but I think we want something a little bit more neutral like that. Um, you can already see how this is going. That that green would completely change the atmosphere. I do like the green actually. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste that. I'm going to pull this to the side, and I'm going to change this back to the white one. Now. I'm going to leave it that size because this is our base. It's our main uh, fabric element. But this green one I quite liked, and I think it's going to be an accent material. So just drop, drop the scale of it just by clicking over here, scale. And you can move the scale around, and the texture will adjust, which is what's great. Okay, so I'm not sure we'll use that. Let me put it to the side. But I did like it. So I'll bring this in. I'm going to stick it underneath the tile over here. So just holding shift, putting it over here. That. And now I'm going to bring in some of our um, accent materials that we like. Don't like any of these. I think what we do want is, although these have sort of a nice sheen to it, that's got like slightly metallic finish. It's actually quite nice. So maybe I'll keep that. But this denim doesn't work. Um, I think that... Sometimes I'll bring the materials close together to see if they talk to each other in terms of colors. So I like that because there's a bit of a sheen in this one. Um, so I want to come back here, go back to blue. I'm um, going to switch off leather. I'm going to look through here for some geometric shapes, which I think would be more fun. Uh, and give it more of that classic. Um, that's really quite nice. It's got like a ribbed effect to it. And I think some geometry is going to be good for the scheme as accent like pillows um, because it's going to bring some fun to it. So I'm looking for different elements. I'll just bring a bunch in here and we can decide what works for us. Oh, yeah, I really like that because now that gives us sort of a knitted weave. And if I delete these other ones, We've just got a really nice sort of eclecticism going on here uh, with the different types of uh, accent pillows. So that's working quite well. We've got one strong dark material. Um, I can bring that in a little bit closer. And I see that it doesn't quite work with that, whereas this one does. So I'll put that down a little bit lower here and then sort of want to build it up with a bit of a gap between those two, because that one was slightly too green. Or what I need to do is bring in another material um, to help that green one not feel so green compared to everything else. So let's actually try and do that. Let's find something that transitions it, which looks like this material would do great, being a transition. I really like this. Okay, let's tuck this one in. I just think that's very nice and subtle. And this is a great transition material for us. So I'm going to change the size of that. And I'm going to put it in over here just to help bring these materials and that green one to stand out too much. Um, so I quite like that. I think this could probably go better with the walnut side of things. So I'll bring those over to the other side to balance that off. And now if we go back, we look, we've done our accents to do furniture and lighting. Um, so I'll come back here to Matterboard. I also want to bring in those handles with the brass. So I'm going to look up, I think, Jung. There's a light switch by Jung that I really like. It's very contemporary. It's brass, so I'm going to bring that in. Um, and then I think 
great brand, Buster and Punch. So I'll just hit Buster here, open this hand. They've got handles and I want brass only. These pull handles are great. So I'll bring these in. It's going to sit around with the joinery over here. Really like that. And Pushka. Just take switch off my filters. Really love this. These brass features here by Pushka handles. You can see the, this element. It's a great product. Just spin that around for you. So you can actually see what it looks like. I think that looks great. I'll put it somewhere on the side like this. Uh, here, it's actually a bit, doesn't feel right for the full mood, actually, now that I think about it. Um, and so I think the previous handles, I'll just type in the word handle, find something that was nicer for us. It was a big pull handle. Got a pull handle, that's it. Let's bring this element in. Okay. Um, now, furniture we left on the side here. We've got that. So I'm going to bring this piece of furniture in and lift it up so it's got a nice sort of drop shadow. And then I've actually gone and tried to find this lighting. I think that looks great. It's very, very retro. So I found it. So here I'm going to just drag it in directly into Matterboard. Bring it in like this. Now, I could remove the background like we did the piece of furniture, but I think it will just look nice as a Polaroid. And let's bring in that piece over here too. We had from earlier. Okay, so this is starting to look really, really good. Um, we've got a lot of different materials happening here. I'm trying to see if this green one really worked for us, but I don't think so. so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete this too. Um, but here we have a very, very beautiful board. I think it's working really quite well for this whole scheme. Some things I want to do in terms of final, final objects is I'm going to grab a sphere from over here. So I'm going to bring in a sphere and I'm going to just bring some mirror effects. So I'm going to go to properties, show you something else you can do with Matterboard is I can increase the glossiness here, of like generic objects and their metallicness. I'm going to create something like that. I also want to maybe make it slightly transparent, see through it a little bit, and I'm going to reduce the size. Oops, sorry, I slipped. I'll reduce the size of that. And now I'm going to go to accessories, look for something like a, a branch, birch tree branch, bring that in, move this out the way somewhere there in the middle and that's it um so that's one way to build a board just on the fly um i hope that was a useful talking exercise um something you can do for your presentation is you can record it just show you how to do that here you can hit record um and then it you can move the light around uh, and film your screen you can actually zoom all the way in, show your clients uh, all the texture, and you can create some animated GIFs um, for your presentations. And you can also download in the top right-hand corner here uh, your board. Great thing with the Pro is you can select PNG, which will remove the background. So this can go directly into your um, PowerPoint presentations or InDesign documents. Close it there. Um, and Sabina, I think that's it. Um, keep going on these but i think that's Great. a really good board yeah. we did have a couple of questions come up a few times that i thought i would share with the group um that you could okay. help us answer so there were a lot of questions around you know, which features you're using that were pro, which ones were free. It would be great to just see, take a couple of minutes to go through, like, for example, the record function is a pro feature, but yes. I, I believe yes. most of the ones you used obviously are free. So just so that everyone's yes. aware. Yeah. Um, I've deliberately used uh, a lot of, most of the free um, uh, functions here, uh, just so that everyone can, can repeat this process. Um, but the pro, you will see there are some accessories and elements that will have the big pro logo on it. 
Um, and these are obviously way more demanding in terms of detail and fidelity. Um, so they are for pro users. Um, and the record button is for pro. Um, it's also a lot of heavy lifting for us to do there, um, which allows you to film your screen um, and create those animations. Um, downloading, anyone can download, but you'll see here there are some croppings that are specifically for pro. Um, and also the PNG, uh, as well as web uh, WebP formats. If you want a PNG background, if you want to remove that part of the board, that is for, for pro users as well. Um, and then the rest of the functions that I used are all free for everybody. Great. And if you could also, if you wouldn't mind just showing everybody where they can find the brands that we have on Matterboard, for example, in accessories and materials, how to filter that by brand. Yes. Yeah, great. So I know I moved I moved very quickly. Um, that's because I'm familiar with with Matterboard, and you guys will be to become sort of second nature. Um, so it doesn't get in the way of your design process. But what I've done here is uh, on the materials tab on the right hand side. If you hit filters, um, always look out for the clear filters because you want to get rid of what you've previously done. Um, and it's here that you can find brands specifically. Uh, the categories. So I'll just show you brands here. You can go directly to artistry flooring, for example, and just have their products. I'll deselect that. Um, you can go straight to Jurat materials. Oh, these look great. Um, and you can also go directly to a category, carpet, concrete, etc. Or as we did for this scheme, we went directly to blue. Um, so there's only two, four things here because that's not much blue concrete. But uh, <laughs> And you can also look up uh, by texture type if you're looking for hard or soft surfaces. That's how you do it on this side. It's under filters. Always remember to clear your filters. And for the accessories, it's the same. Here's the filter button. Uh, you can open that and you can go directly to brands. You can hit three form. Um, I'll just you clear my search there. So I'll hit three form. Um, and here you can find some products. You, know, you can bring... Oh, that's lovely. Um, so you can see there are sort of even transparent um, um, products as well. Uh, three form does sort of glazing elements and glass pieces. Um, and so you can find them here. And you can go by brand and again by category. And while you have that up, um, I think there was a question also about how do you know once you've put it on your board, what is the brand and product? So if you just click on the product okay, great. and you go over to the side on properties, you can see that it says three form there. Yes, yeah. So you can see that's the three form product over here. If I select the the wood over here, um, of course the wood opens the um, the materials tab because it's now allowing me to change the material. So I can quickly change that to that mark to a marble. Now, if I want to find out what that surface was, I go to properties with it selected. And it will tell me that it's uh, the Sigourney um, Port Lawan. Great. Uh, we also had a question about the lighting, how to move around the lighting. Uh, the okay. question was, how do you add lighting? Um, which I know yeah, you can show us how to change the lighting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so adding lighting that's complicated um, to do in a virtual format like this. Um, that's not with. That's not to say we're not going to be able to do it in the future. But right now, you can't add light elements uh, that will light up. For example, this we will be able to do that. Um, um, but what you want to do is you want to go to lighting here. This is your studio, um, the studio table. Um, and light position will move it from right to left. This is probably what you use the most um, because it allows you to see the way that uh, materials on your board are interacting with light and shadow. But you can also change the intensity of the lighting if you really wanted to over here, give you a much harder shadows, um, but that's very, very possible. Um, it also helps it look a lot more realistic too. Um, and then color temperature. Uh, you can change it to, uh, this is sort of more for outdoor lighting further to the right um, and slightly more warmer uh, indoor lighting. Uh, but we've set it up as a, a studio setup. So very, very neutral for everything. Yeah. 
I'm wondering if uh, Stefania meant maybe lighting products, adding uh, lighting okay. products. <laughs> but I'm I'm not sure ex exactly, but just in case. Well, okay, if she meant that, for example, we brought in this image, a reference image of lighting, that then now sits here under our um, images, and you can see it there, and we can bring that in um, again, and we can sort of change the way that we want that to be shown so, and this is where your furniture and lighting products will exist um, and I suppose it's worth also just expanding here my materials this is great this is where you can upload your own materials so if there is a product that you don't find on Matterboard that you really want you can create it here all you do is either create a new paint color or a new material you can select new material you can find your image and then you can upload it uh, and that will create a 3D texture for you, like this one, which we've created already for ourselves, because this was the material that we had on a particular project. Yes, lots. we had lots of questions about how to add your own materials, how to add your own great. fabrics. We have a great tutorial on our YouTube page as well. Um, I'm going to... I think there was one more question, um, unless you guys have really pressing. Let's see. Let me just quickly look at this. Uh, text. Mm. Could you just oh, yes. show how to use text? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So you go to the um, label label section over here, um, and we can just drag this text in here, and I can type in. Hello, Matterboard, or whatever you need to describe um, over there on the right-hand side. And now you can um, place this wherever you want. You can also change the scale of it. Um, and then you can add a, a leader line as well. So this, say I take this line here with a line with a dot, and I will now click my starting point. Let's say it's this brass. I click and I hold, and I drop it at that element there, and now and this I can also scale and, and change positions, et cetera. But now I've got a leader and um, some text. Great. Easy. Okay. Um, we had a couple questions about the grid lines. How do you add mm. the grid lines? How do you take them away? Do they mm. come in the imperial scale? Which yes. Okay, yes. Great. Yes. So um, as soon as you create a Matterboard account, we will ask you if you want a metric or imperial as your scale. Um, if you don't know, it's okay. I would suggest choose metric. <laughs> um, and you can always change it at a, at a later stage. Um, and so the scale does change depending on uh, what you've selected. Um, the grid is available up here. Um, I often switch it on and off. Wow, that looks great. Um, so I'll often switch it on and off because sometimes it helps me just visualize myself being in my studio, moving uh, objects and materials around, and also helps me get a sense of the scale of the board. Um, but I'll often switch it off uh, to make that final um, board image um, before I render, because you can render it with the with the the, the grid on. Wonderful. I think that is all of our questions for now, and we're right at, at the time. Uh, a lot of you guys also are asking if there's going to be a recording. Yes, there will be a recording. It'll be available on our YouTube. Uh, we'll be uploading it this week, so keep an eye out for that, and you might also see it in your newsletter. Um, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us anytime at studio at matterboard.com. Um, and we're really excited and happy that you were able to join us today. Yeah. Thank you everybody for being here. Uh, that was great fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I hope that Matterboard brings you value. Uh, and I hope this was useful. Please give us feedback. We'd love to know um, if the presentation was useful and how we can improve it. And uh, we're up for doing more if you guys would like that.